What is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Equal Espresso and welcome back. Today we've got a ton more info to talk about regarding Advanced Warfare. Today what we're going to be talking about and going over is all the known perks. So let's aim for 100 likes again here on this video today. You guys absolutely killed that one yesterday and as of recently so the support is always greatly appreciated. But let's get back to the topic at hand here today, perks. One of the large portions of multiplayer, but oftentimes we don't really even talk about or think of them. And come to think of it, here on my channel we've talked about maps, guns, streaks, mechanics, but I don't recall more than one speculation video here on perks up on my channel. And the thing is, perks build up about half of your loadout, if not a little bit more. So from the reveal event, we got a look at all the perks that we have in Advanced Warfare. That is for the time being. I thought I would mention this before we get too far into the video, but the demo that was playable at Gamescom was just that a demo it is a guarantee that this game right now is not the finalized product it is not the version you'll be picking up early on November 3rd or 4th or later on in the year so some things may be missing for the time being perks are a little bit more set in stone than other things like weapons which from what I hear we actually only had a limited number of them usable at Gamescom for the demo but I wouldn't worry too much so first things first before we get into everything that is the world of perks in the game we'll dive a little bit into the pick 13 system completely in depth a little bit later but here's a basic image of our loadouts you can see that we have three tiers of perks much simpler than the ghost perk system even though I will admit I did like the variety there and that was one of the places in the game that I wouldn't really complain too much about Along with the three tiers of perks, we also have the Exo Abilities and the Exo Launcher category. So the normal perks from the Black Ops 2 Pick 10 are returning, and where we would see our Lethal and Tactical, those are replaced with Abilities and a Launcher. So not too bad considering our Abilities will be able to have what Tacticals do built in. So for our perk 1 tier, we have Lightweight, Low Profile, Danger Close, Overcharged, and Flak Jacket. Some of these are returning. And actually, all of these are returning perks except one. Low Profile is a new name for the Incog perk, where it would render you unseeable with UAVs and tracking rounds. Tracking rounds is something we haven't really heard much about, but we'll talk about that at a future time. Lightweight is the normal increased movement speed. Danger Close increases explosive and score streak damage. And this is one that is getting a lot of crap, something a lot of players didn't really want in the game. But all in all, I don't think it's the worst thing that could happen. Overcharged is a new perk that will allow you to extend your exo ability battery life and will shock enemies on impact of a boost slam. So we saw this briefly in the reveal event and it looks really handy if you plan on using exo abilities as it adds a few seconds of life to them. And finally, Flak Jacket reduces damage taken from explosives and also has no slowdown from explosive damage and will reset the grenade times when throwing them back. So moving over into our perk two slots, we have Peripherals, Blind Eye, Cold Blooded, Fast Hands, and Gung Ho. So Peripherals is a cool new perk. It acts almost like an extended UAV and makes the viewable minimap larger for the player using it as well as it has an integrated takedown perk from ghost and it doesn't display the death icon so blind eye is our norm you'll be undetectable to tracking rounds explosive drones and score streaks excluding the UAV which to me is a nice little addition there cold-blooded is another returning perk you'll be undetected to thermal scopes target enhancers threat grenades and a new addition enemy callouts. so that also confirms that there will be callouts made by the AI soldiers in game 2 continuing what ghost did so along with this you'll also have no name to displayed when someone is aiming at you. Fast Hands is a returning perk from Black Ops 2 as well. You'll be able to reload while sprinting and swap weapons, use exo abilities, and use the exo launcher faster. It's just a bit of quick speed there for you guys, a perk that I'm personally going to be using all the time. Finally, in our tier 2, we have Gung Ho. This is a brand new perk that will allow you to shoot while sprinting and sliding, so it'll be interesting to see the movement speed of that while sprinting because we already know that our movement speed is increased tremendously, so while sprinting and being able to shoot, That'll be something brand new to the series as well. We already know that sliding will be returning, something I'm quite happy about because it is much more practical than dolph diving, even though it is unbearably fun to do it sometimes. So as for our last category of perks, our perk three slots include toughness, scavenger, blast suppressor, hardwired, and hardline. Toughness will allow you to control your aim while being shot at, so you'll flinch less when being shot. Scavenger, you'll start out with extra mags and be able to resupply ammo from players that are dead, which this is a new little spin to it, although I can't really say new because we have seen it before but not in recent years used to be able to start off with the same features with the pro perks 
but in recent years scavenger only picked up ammo and it didn't let you top off from the beginning I believe Modern Warfare 3 was the last game to do this, but it is a nice re-addition to the game. With Blast Suppressor, you won't show up on the minimap using EXO abilities, so this tells me one thing. The dodges, boosts, and jumps will show up on your minimap, similar to how shots do when you shoot, so the EXOs will have the same effect, something I personally didn't ever think of, but that makes great balance to the movements in my opinion, so this perk will definitely be a needed one. Hardwired allows you to be immune to system hacks, EMPs, nano swarms, stun grenades, and scramblers, something that again is almost a must and definitely very helpful. And finally we have Hardline. Of course it's the same perk, it's going to decrease your score streak cost by 100 points. So personally I think this last tier of perks is the most beneficial to players and it's one that I'm going to be using a wild card for sure in this tier because there's just a bunch of perks that I find extremely useful. So I can't just leave you guys with the perks, let's talk about our exo abilities and launchers too. Our abilities include shield, overclock, stim, cloak, hover, ping and trophy system. So, shield we saw during the gameplay trailer, you'll be able to deploy a shield that is attached to your ex's arm. So, there's your riot shield right there. I'm glad to see that it's not a weapon, but rather something you can only use for five seconds or so. Overclock will increase your foot speed. I'm guessing similar to the agility perk where you'll be able to just move overall a little bit faster. Something you'll be able to notice without, but it won't handicap you if you don't use it. Stim will temporarily generate health beyond normal levels. So, think of it as ICU, but adding health on top of your max health already so kind of like a ballistic vest that will generate on you in essence so cloak will allow you to temporarily be invisible to players in first person hover will allow you to do just that to hover for a short period of time ping will allow you to see enemy exo movements like boost jump dodge as well as their weapon fire and finally trophy system will act like a trophy system and just disable grenades coming in your direction on to our launcher items we have a frag grenade stun grenade explosive drone tracking drone semtex threat grenade emp grenade smoke grenade Grenade, variable grenade and a spike drone so the frag is a standard cookable grenade the stun will blind and slow enemies for a brief period it also says that it can be manually detonated so our c4 type of detonation could be returning i'm guessing which speaking of c4 i don't see it around here at all so it is a good day in call of duty the explosive drone will track enemies and explode a tracking drone will do similar things but will highlight enemies and it almost reminds me of the recon drone from modern warfare 3 though i'm guessing you won't have to control it and will do its own thing so the Semtex is our standard time sticky explosive. The threat grenade will show enemies through walls almost like an oracle in grenades, but I'm assuming there will be limitations to the factors of visibility. I'm assuming that the number of objects between the grenade and the player will affect it, as well as the people that use stealth perks. So the EMP grenade is returning as well. That will disable enemy electronics as well as the exo ability, so that's a neat little twist on it. The smoke grenade will toss up a smoke as normal. The variable grenade will be able to cycle through stun, EMP, threat, and smoke smoke so kind of like a jack-in-the-box grenade this one can't be manually detonated and I'll be interested to see how this one plays out whether it's random or it's choosable only reason I think it might be random is the fact that if you can choose why not just allocate enough space for players to just have all of them equipped at the same time so finally our spike drone this is our drone that was in the gameplay trailer and I said it was almost like the ballistic knife it's a one-hit kill and can return to you on command so that's a cool added feature there now I know this video is getting a little bit longer but let's talk quickly about the wild cards before before we go in these we have three sets of three wild cards blue indicate weapon wild cards green indicates perk wild cards and the topaz looking color indicates exo and streak wild cards so overkill will allow you to have an extra primary in place of your secondary primary gunfighter will allow you to equip another attachment onto your primary secondary gunfighter will allow you to take another attachment on your secondary perk one two and three greed will allow you to take another perk in the respective slots tactician will allow you to take an exo ability in place of a launcher item bombardier will allow you to take the opposite and take a launcher in place of your ability and streaker will allow you to take a fourth score streak so that just about does it here for these perks in advanced warfare like i said this isn't completely set in stone we've got a lot of time until launch perks could be added in though i doubt we'll see any removed one I'm hoping that is added in is Dead Silence, and I'm kind of expecting you guys to do a little double take on that one, like I did when I first saw that, that it wasn't in there. So with that being said, the question of the day, do you guys think that not having Dead Silence will be a key factor in terms of the perks, as in do you think that that will be a game-changing factor? Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. That's been my time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Vinicola Espresso. If you did like the video, please leave a like down below. Any shares to your Facebook, Twitter, and my specific video, would you like that, or was greatly appreciated. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe 
have the best of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare content. I still have a ton of stuff coming to you guys. Literally over a dozen videos that I still have planned about the Advanced Warfare multiplayer experience and from the reveal and all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys once again so much for watching. My name's been Nicola Espresso. As always, hope you guys are having a great day. I shall see you guys tomorrow. Take care and peace. Surprise, motherfucker.